Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Sons of men and angels say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we gather on this day to offer to the Lord our God this worship and this sacrifice of the Mass, as well as our own sacrifices of prayer and praise and thanksgiving. And the Church throughout the world rejoices on this day in the memory of two great saints, Saint Peter Chanel, and St. Louis de Montfort. As we prepare to enter into this mystery of God's love for us, let us first call to mind our own sins, our weaknesses, and our failures, asking God for his forgiveness and trusting in his mercy. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who open wide the gates of the heavenly kingdom to those reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, Pour out on your servants an increase of the grace you have bestowed, that having been purged of all sins, they may lack nothing that in your kindness you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen said to the people, the elders and the scribes, You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always oppose the Holy Spirit. You are just like your ancestors. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They put to death those who foretold the coming of the righteous one whose betrayers and murderers you have now become. You received the laws transmitted by angels, but you did not observe it. When they heard this, they were infuriated, and they ground their teeth at him. But Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked up intently to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And Stephen said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out in a loud voice, covered their ears, and rushed upon him together. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. The witnesses laid down their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell to his knees and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. 
Now Saul was consenting to this execution. The word of the Lord. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. You are my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, you will lead and guide me. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. My trust trust is in the Lord. Lord. I will rejoice and be glad glad of your mercy. Let your face face shine upon your your servants. Save me in your kindness. kindness. You hide them in the shelter of your presence presence from the plotting of of men. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The crowd said to Jesus, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you. It was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to Jesus, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. I enjoy very much the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John, uh, what most people uh, refer to as the Bread of Life discourses, and it often reminds me of, oddly enough, summertime in year B of the lectionary cycle, because year B is when we use the Gospel of Mark. And yet Mark, being the shortest of the three synoptic Gospels, Uh, there's not enough of it to fill out a full 32 to 34 weeks of ordinary time Sundays. Um, So, in the middle of year B, which happens to fall during the summer, we inject four or five Sundays from John, from the Bread of Life Discourses, where Sunday after Sunday we walk through this chapter. 
and we see Jesus and the crowd having a discussion, a discourse about the bread of life. And this part, this what we heard today, this specific part of the bread of life discourses falls around about the middle where Jesus gives to the people the great reveal. So up until this point, Jesus began by performing a miracle of feeding, as we hear uh, throughout the Gospels that he does every now and then. He fed the crowds and then left them. And they came in search for, of him, and he calls them out. This is one of my, one of my, some of my favorite gospel passages are where Jesus simply says exactly what's going on. Um, we're not very good at that. We like to uh, hide and conceal things so that people don't feel called out. Conversely, oddly enough, on the other hand, we absolutely adore calling people out. Um, we are a fickle bunch. But Jesus calls them out and says, you haven't come here because of me. You came because I fed you once and you're hungry again and you just want more food. And so we enter into the bread of life discourses and what the bread of life is. And here we come to sort of the heart of the Bread of Life discourses and the big reveal, if you will, where the crowd says, you know, why should we believe you? I mean, apart from the fact that he just fed them miraculously. This should be very relatable to us, by the way. God does something nice for us and we observe it and then you know, a test of faith comes, comes around and we want God to show proof that he's God, even though he just did. Um, anyway, so the people say, what, why should we believe you? Um, you know, Moses gave his people manna. What can you do for us? And Jesus says to them, in all honesty, Moses didn't do anything. God did it. And God is doing it now. The bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And that sounds really great. Just as uh, elsewhere in John, where Jesus is speaking to the woman at the well, and he says, you know, I, I know of some water that you only have to sip on once and, and you will have living water springing up within you forever. And the woman at the well thinks, well, this is great because if that happens, then I don't have to keep coming here to get water. So he does the same thing with the bread of heaven. And the people respond the same way that the woman at the well does. Oh, that sounds great. We can have some bread. And when we eat the bread, we have life. Not just sustenance, but life. Sir, give us this bread always. That sounds like a great deal. And the reveal. I am the bread of life. I am that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. We know that Jesus is referring to himself. He's not referring to physical bread any more than with the woman at the well. He's referring to physical water. Jesus is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. He accomplishes this by means of what we are still celebrating now, his paschal sacrifice of himself to take away death 
and in the absence of death, all that remains is life. To take away the power and the sting and the eternity of death, to make it a mere moment of passage from life to life. And then the rest of this chapter is spent going back and forth between Jesus and the people who do not understand what he means. So let us endeavor to understand what he means. Not what we think he means, but what he actually means. And what he means is that, as he gets into later in the Bread of Life discourse, we should be so ravenously hungry for him in himself that he is our priority. Therefore, it follows. If he, is, if he becomes our priority, then his priorities become ours. And his priority is to do the will of the one who sent him. Which, if you follow along in a chain of logic, means that what it is to have life, what it is to be living, and what it is to eat the bread of life and metabolize it in our being so that it becomes us and we become it, is to do the will of God. And to do the will of God is possible, is absolutely possible. And we sustain ourselves because unlike God, unlike Christ, we are not eternal at least not yet. We are finite and limited and exhaustible in this world at least. What we do to carry on is to return to Christ. Christ who again, when he's speaking during the woman at the well episode when his disciples come back, and wonder about where, what, what he's going to eat. He says of himself, what feeds him is the will of his Father. What gives him life and what sustains his life and what preserves his life is doing the will of the Father. which is expounded upon in the Bread of Life discourses. He, Christ, gives us life. And the more we take him in and metabolize him, the more we cease to be like ourselves, the more we become who he is, and who he is is the one who accomplished and pursued the will of the Father. We're also mindful. Should we be tempted to fall into despair during these days when our access to the sacraments is limited? And should we be tempted to despair, we can recall the words of Christ himself when he himself was tempted. This homily is going all over the place. I'm not sorry. Recall how we began Lent all those weeks ago Christ's temptation in the desert 
I have to believe that when, when Satan tempted Christ, it was not a mere symbolic temptation. It was the same as when any of us are tempted. He used the things that were the weaknesses, if you will, the things that tempt us the most. Why would he not attempt the same thing with Christ? Turn this stone into bread if you're so hungry. And Christ says, man does not live on bread alone, but from every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. And here too, here too, if we live from every word that comes forth on the, from the mouth of God, then we live triumphantly and eternally from the word that comes forth from the mouth of God, his son. To learn from him as a student learns from his teacher, as a disciple learns from her master. And imitate him. This is what it means to eat the bread of life. It means to take Christ in and metabolize him to the point that we cease to be at the very least, that we cease to be an obstacle. And instead, Christ is within us. So let us feast upon what we do have, the Word of God and the presence of Christ And let us rejoice that although we are finite and we are exhaustible and we grow weary and tired, we have a source of life that is inexhaustible and eternal and immortal. That is why we feed on Christ and nothing else, because anything else will fail in time. Christ never fails. So let us feast upon him and so become him and in becoming him do the will of the one who sent him. My brothers and sisters, let us present before that throne of grace our needs, our prayers, and our concerns. We pray for the ability in the lives of all of us in the church to understand God's will in our lives and to avoid the temptation of doing the will of another besides God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray through the intercession of St. Louis de Montfort, St. Peter Chanel, and St. Stephen, that we will have a deep desire to be saints, to follow God's will perfectly, to inhabit heaven with him, so that his sacrifice upon us on the cross will truly bring about what he intended for each one of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are struggling with temptations in their home. That during this time of isolation, we pray for those attacks that come in the form of temptation, that we may have all the spiritual tools we need to fight them off. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the repose of the soul of Betsy William Potts, the intention of this Mass. We pray as well for the repose of the soul of Bill Berry and for his widow Kate. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for our St. Roque ministry as they engage tomorrow in their St. Catherine of Siena feeding of the hungry. We pray that for those 200 families that they will feed tomorrow, that they will continue to give a gift of hope, of faith, and of love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the prayers on our parish prayer chain. Our parish, Book of Intentions, all those intentions that are already prayed in rosaries throughout our parish, and for those prayers that we bring to the silence of our hearts now. and for our governor and our bishop as they discern the wisest way to reopen our churches and reopen our communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who willed to direct the steps of the priest St. Louis de Montfort along the way of salvation and of the love of Christ in the company of the Blessed Virgin, grant us by his example that meditating on the mysteries of your love, we may strive tirelessly for the building up of your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. And blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis und Celi et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in Excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in Domine Domini, Hosanna in Excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Peter Chanel, St. Louis de Montfort, St. Stephen, St. James, St. Peter, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. If we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Christ. Alleluia. Amen.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Amen.